show, 2022, right? The Skin USA booth. We don't have anything left of Matt's line. Matt brought about 30 plus of his double action auto. We sold these out the first day within a couple hours. We had Matt's Integral Design little flipper that Riyadh did for Matt. That sold out today. What we have left in the counter is a really good knife from Sam Larkin. This is Sam's production line. So I don't know where they're selling them at. We just love Sam. So we, when our case got empty, we put more of his stuff in. So this is Sam's new little fixed blade. Awesome, awesome, well-designed little piece. Been a very good blade show so far. Thank you for coming by. Tell us all about that knife. Oh, it's got a in, it's got a metal insert. It's got a lightweight. What kind so of it's steel? An integral flipper, which means it's the whole titanium chassis machined out of one piece. It's got a lock, stainless, so it doesn't gall. M390 steel. Fantastic little knife. Probably design-wise and function-wise, one of the best little gentlemen slippers at the show. How about that one? This one is Matt's Double Action Auto. Runs on thrust bearings, super smooth. If you need to open it in a hurry, slide the scale. It's a very fast Double Action Auto. The scale release. It is. Good, Joe. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Joe. What a um, dynamic demonstrator. And I think we were really lucky that um, even though Matt sold out first day, uh, they had a few uh, samples in their pocket so we could get to see that. So uh, that was really great. And... Uh, what I'm going to do now is just add some narrative and you folks can stick around for that. If uh, you don't want to stick around for my cycle babble, then thank you very much. Have a nice day. I just want to say it's very interesting that Matt is a world-class maker, uh, sells out right away, and he is noted for his uh, dual action knives. I met Matt a couple years ago. I was introduced to him by um, Butch Vallant and Vallotton. And um, he, he said, you know, if you're interested in knife mechanisms, you got to meet this guy, Matt Dixon, because he's really um, one of the top notch guys. And he goes over there and he introduces me and he says, yeah, and Matt uh, copied my design. And he said it with a kind of a smile. And Matt kind of smiled back. He says, yeah, but I changed it. And Butch kind of laughed. He said, yeah, that's right, he did. So uh, just interesting, this uh, sort of exchange between these world-class knife makers, I'm sure they had a lot of respect for each other. And I'm really glad that... Uh, I met both of them. Butch has been uh, noted for uh, his conversions of um, some factory knives into uh, dual action. He also makes his own, of course. His, fa his family carried on the tradition. And Matt is really uh, accomplished in making these uh, dual action automatics. And this is uh, picture we're looking at now is uh, the one he's offered up for uh, the Blade Show 2022. Uh, it's really uh, kind of a, a neat design. And if you look at the um, picture here, you can see the uh, scale uh, sort of looks like a sort of a snakeskin. Um, and of course, uh, an inside look here, um, there will be a leaf spring probably. I uh, can't really say that I see it, and I don't know if the knife's been opened manually or has been uh, uh, 
opened um, automatically. But it's a uh, liner lock, and in there is something going on. Uh, by the way, you know, I talk about his knives in my uh, book two. So uh, I don't know if he's using a similar mechanism, something different. Uh, he's always developing new stuff, so it could be it could be a rather different uh, type of mechanism. But here is the uh, left side of the knife, and uh, it's the same type of uh, handle material. And what we see is sort of a continuous um, bit of handle material from the front to the back. Although if you look close you might see this diagonal line in between two screws. Now, remember, the other side only had one screw. This has got two screws. So that kind of gives you a little suspicion something's going on. And here's a, another picture. And with the light shining on it, you sort of see that diagonal line a little bit better. But you're really hard to press to notice it at all. And this is me. Um, I got wounded by a, um, a, a ballet song of all weird things. Um, no, I wasn't flipping it. I was taking a picture of it. Um, but I'm holding that and uh, you can see my Band-Aid. And anyway, my thumb's on it and uh, I'm holding my left hand because I'm holding the camera in the right hand. And uh, this is uh, the blade extended, and uh, all the handle material is uh, in its proper position. Again, this is very hard to see that line. So just another shot of it a little bit farther away. Uh, you, and now what I'm doing now, since it is scale release, I'm pushing on the scale, the front part of the scale, and you can see it's separate. And you can see that the scale has moved up a little bit. Now the back of the scale, top of the scale, is a little bit proud of the back of the knife. And I'm going to show that a couple times. And I'm probably, I'm pushing down that uh, probably as far as it'll go, which is probably more than it needs to fire. So I'm pushing it uh, to the max. That's how far it, it can travel. Probably it's farther than it needs to travel. And here I got this um, sort of purple arrow uh, showing how the uh, front piece of the scale separates from the rest of the scale. And that is what is connected to the release mechanism, which releases the spring. Because as you saw with Joe, the knife opens manually, but it also opens as automatic. So it's a dual action. And uh, that's again with it back in its uh, normal position. And here again, I'm pushing it. I'm just trying to show a little bit different view uh, how the scale now uh, rose up um, and with my thumb on it. And again, I got the arrow here. So that's uh, showing um, that the position has moved. And here's just a further close-up. And that's, that scale is, uh, is pushed up. It's uh, uh, actually a little bit above the uh, top of the knife. And this is just a, sort of a shot of the blade. It's uh, really a, a, a fine-looking uh, grind there. Very nicely done. It's got the uh, sort of hole in there as a thumb bob. Now this is the other night. I guess this is the one uh, Joe was talking about uh, with the uh, titanium. And it's got a metal insert. This is the, the right side. Uh, I guess it's got a, a, uh, a stop for the spring. And I've never seen one like that before. The, the, the stop is part of a, like a washer for the uh, pivot screw. And uh, it's got all these uh, lines in the handle. And that's what kind of struck me, uh, which we're going to talk about. This is a kind of an inside shot, uh, the liner lock. It's 
milled uh, titanium scales. And another close up of the blade in a locked open position. Now this is the, the side view and you notice there's sort of a groove on the blade and then there's these lines and grooves on the handle. And these arrows just show what impressed me is that line, it just sort of continues down. It's, uh, it's almost like an art deco look. And um, probably nobody is old enough to remember art deco. I'm not even old enough to remember art deco, but I remember seeing it in old magazines and, and things. This is sort of an art deco style from the uh, 1930s that they had this sort of, this. Uh, they tried to look modern when, when they uh, designed stuff. And this was their modern look. Anyway, it's very artistic. Uh, I'm really impressed with the uh, artistic beauty of this knife. And now we're going to look at the, the straight blade. And I tell you, this is really interesting um, to me. If you look at the ergonomic design, first, in the handle, there's a big cutout for the index finger. And also, the, the rest of the handle sort of has a shape and all these contours. But there's also uh, a, a cutout in the choil. Now, is that unusual? No. I, that you see all the time. But when you couple that with the top of the blade, there's sort of a, a rise up um, opposite the, the choil. And then there's another little indent. And that looks like where you would put your thumb. If you, had your, if you choked up on the knife, like you were cutting something very delicate, and you choked up and you put your uh, index finger in the notch in the choil, there's a place for your thumb up there. So you can really do some fine, delicate work. OK, and just want to show the knife again, the sheath. Got a kydex sheath. And uh, one more shot of the, sh uh, the sheath and the knife. So um, some really neat stuff. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Matt and Joe. And uh, thank you guys. Uh, have a good one.